Okay, seams are filled other than the garbage seam because I've recorked it and I'm also still recorking it. And around the horn timber needs to be done. But Haley is finishing off the transom right now. Getting rid of the sucaflex on the planks, getting rid of the epoxy on the planks, and giving the epoxy on the back uh, white sand because it got slightly milky. Um, and then we're going to have the seat all on it. I'm now doing port side, gooey schmooey stuff. I've sanded the entire boat by now. Yeah. <laughs> she fucking feels like it. Uh, yeah, she has currently, she sanded back all the glass we put on the top. Barry, can you talk us through what you're doing right now? I am glassing over the edge of the deck because I cut away all of this, which leaves exposed end grain, so uh, yeah, I'm glassing over the edge so that we can put the transom on. So it's one of the one of the steps for getting everything ready, getting all the frames on. So then after you get this piece of glass on, or a couple layers of it, and you finish adding the support beam there, and install the other beam, sorry I'm pointing with my cigarette, across here, you can basically template it and then put the ply on. Exactly. Ready. Uh, so it's like that transom lasted like 70 years. Yep. It's interesting that just the transom went. Why do you suspect that like the transom was rotting as opposed to everywhere else? Because someone put iron fasteners in over here. Uh, uh, and it was the only spot on the boat that had iron fasteners. Everything else is bronze on this boat and there's no galvanic action. Now what happens is that wood will saturate up with water uh, and that'll sit against the metal. So the metal that... Uh, then it corrodes the, the wood. Yeah, it's bronze. It's like, bronze doesn't do I that. imagine rust is pretty acidic. Yeah, so. it, exactly. Right. Whatever it is, it destroys the, the wood itself. And what I find fascinating is that even like iron sickness, the rusting in the wood mm. is, is bad, but it's it doesn't necessarily condemn a boat like Providence it's yeah. from 1903. And Shout out to Providence! And she's fastened exclusively with um, mm. with iron. Crazy, but they're not rusted? Oh, they are. Oh. And she's just big enough built that it... Uh, it hasn't made a great enough impact. Yeah. Wow, you're spilling a lot. Yeah, it's an underhand. It's a party fall. It's a very comfortable thing to do, obviously. It's the third layer or the fourth layer? Fourth layer. Uh, and I'm just doing it as like an extra abrasion protection because it's a bit of a vulnerable spot. Sanding it yeah. and then templating the transom. Uh, after I get final fit or final uh, fastenings, the bronze fasteners into the new frames, because the new frames aren't in yet. There's one at the bottom and one there that has to go in. Yeah. So I got a little bit more prep to do, and then, which will only take me a couple hours. But realistically, putting the transom on is probably the fastest. Yeah. Piece. It's all the prep work in between that fucking takes forever. Where did my beer go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I suspect that I've got only a couple of hours before there's a transom on here, maybe five hours of work. That's good because that's really all the time you have. Yeah. I like to go down to the wire, hey? It's stressful. Yeah, I don't like it. It's gonna happen with Harry too. We're gonna be under the wire for sure. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I think, I 
mean, that's that's the time you got. You might as well use all of it. But. Hop Country sanded off all the Cicaflex around the outside edge of the transom and got rid of any milky epoxy that was on there. And she's slapping a coat of Cetol on, which is big news because A, it's UV resistant and will protect the epoxy that is on there, and B, it looks dope. Pardon me, it looks pretty super duper neato. Super duper. Oh, how you feel about that, babe? It's her first time doing it. She's an expert. Boat building. Fuck, that looks so good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna... I have like just a little yes. trowel left. I'm gonna finish that up. Okay, Haley got the transom sorted. Did that get sanded down or just left behind? That corner, is that why it's milky? No, things are happening yeah. and like I probably got it but I probably just didn't get enough. Or maybe I was I just wondering if... those two spots but you can like sand it again and then seat haul it. Yeah. Yeah because there's like a couple spots on the bottom. Yeah. Can you told me to sand it real light so I did sand it real light but it was too light. Yeah that's okay. It, lo it looks fucking amazing yeah. regardless. The next photo even about. She's glowing up there. She's gold. I know it's pretty. I want to really see the hatch. Yeah, the hatch so, cover is gonna be amazing. Well, what kind of wood is that? The same as the trim. Same, same as the trim, yeah. That's really dark. That's gonna be so charming. Yeah. With the um the bronze too. Like those colors together. Well, oh, chef's French kiss. Yeah. Have a French kiss. Now imagine if it all looked like that beautiful copper and red wood color. Yeah. That's what we're imagining. With and then black, black top sides. Oh. oh, big day for Dagon. Neck all the world. <laughs> Are your hands clean? Oh, absolutely not. No. Got my espresso maker all shined up and usable, so back to that. And then, you know, I got my my cups, my bowls, my plates, my smaller plates, and a place for all of them, which is great. And then finally got this all sorted out. There's this little hatch back here, which has access for what I'm gonna use now as storage for pots and pans, which I've never used before, but I really need to get things stowed away better. And on this side of the bulkhead, which still has to go back in, there is now a hole which accesses it so i might actually leave some sort of an access there um because that would be wonderful having a little secret door in the boat because i'm splashing soon i have a few massive holes in my boat one of them is the stern bearing and stuffing box i have to finish that setup up as well as I've got a couple more feet of corking to do. I pulled some of the corking out because it wasn't fully watertight and I didn't like the look of the seams. So time to redo them. So I'm gonna grab my corking kit and some oakum and some cotton and start driving some cotton and oakum into the seams. Oh, she a heavy kit. Yeah, I got corking mallets and I've got corking irons and a bunch of fits and pickers and twine and whatever. It's kind of my rigging slash corking kit. Uh, but as you can see here, Haley and I did a bunch of the corking along here. double check and inspect it all but the corking stops here and so I have to cork the entire horn timber here it's quite a wide gap so I'm gonna have to drive some pretty wide oakum in here
As you can see, it's snowing, so I was in a bit of a rush to get this job done. So I didn't stop to go into technicalities or many details of how I was doing it, but I will record an additional segment for the end of this video on how I rolled the oakum and how I stuffed the oakum in between the planks. All right, so I just ran a thread of oakum on the garbird um, and I'm gonna drive it all in now. For corking this section, I have a Drew bent iron, which is really good for these tough angles on a garbage seam. And I hit it till it's not too hard that it might blow through the backside of the plank, but hard enough that it kind of feels like it's one with the boat. It takes a few tries and you get an intuition for it eventually. Okay, good news, port side is entirely corked. Um, I just redid the garbage seam. Haley and I did, we did this stretch here a couple months ago or a month ago or so. Um, so that's all done. And I just finished up with the horn timber and to the transom. And then I just did the section at the bow over there. So now she's ready to have her seams painted and then paid which is wonderful um it's too cold to do that today i'm pretty sure um maybe i'll give it a shot but i'm gonna jump over to starboard so on starboard side the garboard the starboard garboard has to be uh recorked uh i've put little marks like so from here from, from here forward has to be corked to about there and then from here to there. So not a ton, pretty manageable. I'll be able to wrap that up today, no problem. And then there's this here, which I might put some oakum in uh, and then paint and cement, or I might just cement it. I think I'd feel better if I jam some oakum in there. It's pretty, pretty, pretty huge, actually. So, yeah, I'm gonna do some addressing there. And uh, yeah, feeling really good. I did a little like spot corking somewhere around here. We we're just like two or three inches that had to be done. I did that with cotton. Um, but yeah, it's all coming together. And uh, yeah, then I'll put more of my seam compound in. And she's almost watertight. Okay, light's starting to go down. I have finished all the corking, stem to stern. I actually reefed out the remainder of the garboard and redid the whole garboard seam. Um, I was too hectically busy to try and film it, so I apologize. But the next step, is I just got a little bucket of bottom paint and I'm gonna slap some bottom paint on all of the, uh, the oakum so that uh, it's prepped and ready for the seam compound. Okay, it's nice today. Uh, I'm about to start working on the boat. Uh, key things I have to do, I still have to pay the seams that I just corked the other day. I have to sand the top sides. I don't know if I'm gonna do that today or tomorrow. Um, I have to take the prop shaft out. My friend Jay, Jay Bishop at Bishop's welding he's a boat builder he's got a mill so he's gonna just for a case of beer he's gonna put a uh, keyway into my prop shaft so that's wonderful yeah okay pitter patter let's get at her <laughs> Here we go, putting more seam compound in. It's uh, 
honestly a really disgusting job and even if I have gloves, the gloves end up ripping or shredding and I end up getting this stuff all over myself. It's awful. And in really good news, in a couple seconds, everybody's favorite fledgling shipwright shows up. Okay, and Haley just showed up. Uh, we ate a quick meal. I hadn't eaten all day. But, as you saw in the time lapse, I've gotten maybe 20% left to go on starboard side. Um, so I'm gonna mix up some more schmoo, chuck it in there. Um, and in the meantime, Haley's sanding down the sort of high points on the stuff that's kicked off, like this right here, that sort of thing. Um, so that we can, there's a hole in my bottom paint can, so it's spilling out. So we're just gonna chuck it on as soon as possible. So the next step is to get the hull prepped a little bit better. except for where the props are. Um, Haley started sanding everything down, so it looks a lot smoother, feels a lot smoother, looks at bottom paint a little better. Um, and unfortunately the sander died, so she's gonna go buy a new one and show up again tomorrow. But the next job is sanding all this back and then slapping bottom paint on. I think I'm gonna slap some bottom paint on this area pretty quick here, because my can is leaking. And yeah, finished up this side. Oh, sorted and sealed. Oh, that was a back-breaking, horrible, horrible job. I don't wish that job on anybody. Garbage recorked, seams are paid. Bottom paint gonna go on in the next day or two. And since Haley's picking up a new sander, top sides are getting painted, sanded first and then painted, and they are gonna be getting leather black, black leather, whatever, a paint called leather black. And it's the same paint used on Providence and Kakumi, two very cool local big boats. Um, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of a white boat. It makes her look boring and standard. And I like me a black boat, so Dagon's going black. I think she's gonna look really cool with um, bright yellow cedar and black. She's gonna look very, very classy. You can see where all of the turquoise is up here. That will be sanded back and will be varnished and will look that beautiful yellow cedar up there. She is going to shine and then get the rubbing strake sanded back. She's a little bit crusty right now. Turn to bright work, get the bow spread sanded back. Turn to bright work, done. Beautiful, sexy, amazing, cannot wait. Whew. Big, big job off the checklist, fucking stoked. So I wetted down the hull, start kicking off the cement, and I'm inside my boat, and I have the hose in here. I just vacuumed out the bilges because I've been doing a lot of construction in here, so it was dusty. But now I've got the hose going, uh, and I'm running it through the boat, anywhere above the water line, soaking the bilge, starting to do the pre-soak, and yeah, hoping the boat takes up a bunch before I splash. Uh, I'm just going to soak in behind here, but uh, and then I'll do forward later. But for now, I'm just doing a midships and a stern. This is going to be good. I'm going to keep doing this. Um, and I'm also going to go outside momentarily and check and see if the water is being held inside the boat entirely or if the bilge pump's taking care of it or whatever, or if it's weeping through the seams. So yeah. Just pre-soaking the bilge, and I'm gonna keep doing this for the next uh, probably 
um, eight days or so. And the bilge pump's going off, which is great because that means that I haven't fucked up my electrical system too bad. Any little bit of time I can save myself wetting out the hull in the water and not sleeping while I wait for the planks to take up, the better. And it's also a really good chance to clean out all my limber holes, make sure the boat is draining properly everywhere. Nothing like not being able to sleep and having to clean out your limber holes. So I'm just going to leave that up here, running in a way that gets port and starboard, there we go, I'm going to leave that there, it's going to work its way down, I'll go clean up the water down there later, but I'm going to go take a look down below and see how that's faring. Bilge pump is going off as planned. Hard to tell with that bilge water there, but I'm not really seeing any water coming through, which is a good sign. Let's check the side. Got one little drip here, which is fine. Hopefully that takes up. Got another one here. That's fine. Otherwise, great. <laughs> That's great. That means the... Well, I don't have the stuffing in place, so that's okay. I soaked the stuffing box, so that's to be expected. Yeah, she's doing good. She's looking good. I got the old strainer and the bilges are filling up. I'm gonna leave them pretty full. Uh, I put salt in to help preserve the wood. Now that the bilges are filling up, some random debris that I wasn't able to vacuum up has floated to the surface, so I might as well give it a little scoop. had to do this for days after I splashed my boat last time because I set out sailing after a couple days through the Pacific from Oregon to Canada and a lot of debris floated up and it started plugging the bilge pump which was no bueno so it was days before it all came to the surface so my friend Carson and I were taking turns scrubbing out the bilge and finding all the debris and getting rid of it all and it was quite the experience I tell you what not very fun. It was a real lesson in taking care of your bilge before you splash your boat, which is what I'm up to now. You know, lessons learned the hard way. Sometimes they're the best lessons. I'm gonna leave the water in here for a few days. Then I'm gonna drain it, and then I'm gonna vacuum again, and I'm gonna clean up forward. And I'm going to do the same thing over and over and over until these planks are as wet as they're going to get. The wetter the better, they say. Oh, much better. Not that bad, really. <sighs> it's 
been a while, and I'm still waiting for the bilge to fill up. It's funny, you know, like, a glass boat is definitely easier. Um, but, fuck if I don't love this stuff. There's just something so cool about taking the time and the effort and building up the knowledge and having the understanding of how wood works and like I'm pre-swelling the planks so that they take less time to do that when I put it in the water. It's gonna save me a couple days of sleepless nights, hopefully. Um, but I don't know, man, I, I kind of love this stuff. Like there's, there's like a voodoo to it and it takes a long time to get the hang of it and to know it all. And I don't know all of it. I, I know very little of it. Um, I'm still learning every day all the time, but this, this is weirdly amazing. I love this. Um, happy to be spending my time doing this. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird and confusing and silly and, um, you know, I'm freezing cold. My feet are soaked and um, I'm just on land flooding my boat. It's weird, um, but there's a couple reasons for it. To make the planks swell up, uh, to introduce water to the cement in my seam compound to help the cement kick off, um, to test and see if I fucked up any corking anywhere. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird world, but I love it. <laughs> Would I have to do this if it was a glass boat? Absolutely not. Is there an easier way? Absolutely. Is there um, a more romantic, enjoyable, satisfying, rewarding, earned path? I don't think so. This is, this is about as cool as it gets. <laughs> Dumb as it sounds, freezing my ass off in the middle of Richmond in a boatyard. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> I love it. Feeling good about this. One major step. Whoa, and there's no sure footing anywhere, so watch your step. Okay, well, like four beers later and I don't know, a couple hours. It's gone down almost an inch. Well, it's the morning. Uh, I just checked the bilge. It's bone dry. <laughs> good means I can clean it up forward but not great because it means it all either absorbed which would be good or it all spilled out so I'm gonna go take a look down below see what's up it's pretty apparent where it's leaking out everywhere and there's even a few spots where there's like a bulb forming so there's definitely water behind it but that's to be expected. Oh yeah, this stuff really kicked off. That's great. I laid it on real thick in here. I think extra soft in here. Yeah, it's still kicking off though, but it's fucking it's still pretty goopy. This one's kicking off a bit better. I think it needs a few more days before I fuck around with it anymore. Crushing out work right now. We uh, got the davits fully mounted and bedded and watertight. Got the trim on. Ooh. YouTube celebrity alert. <laughs> YouTube celebrity alert. <laughs> Boat guys give me a hard time. But look at that. Woo! Oh, transom done. Once I put, well, I gotta paint this, but uh, holy fuck. Davits are going on in a hot second. Davits are on. Now I can keep my tender out of the water and mount my solar panels up there. That's fucking wonderful. And Haley is revealing beautiful wood up there as she does. You're good, you're good at doing that, babe.
just got the bottom paint on what little I had before the can kicked off because it was all, there was a hole in it and it was leaking, so. so Checked it on. Things are looking good. <laughs> yeah, when I found that, I was like, I know what you are, I'm keeping you. Okay, because I've had a bunch of requests in the comments when I showed the um, the show that I was corking the boat in this episode. So people wanted to have a slightly more in-depth uh, look at it. And unfortunately, when I was corking, I corked very quickly because it was pouring. It was kind of corking. Yeah, it was snowing, and I did not like. I was I wasn't gonna sit here and be like, this is how you do it. So um, I've set up a little janky demo here. Um, it's just two pieces of dunnage I have kicking around uh, with a slight bevel on it. It's not going to be fully accurate to planking or corking a boat, but I can at least explain some of the principles involved. If you want a more in-depth video on corking, who's that guy that we were watching the other day that was banging it out? Uh, if you want to know how to cork a boat... Like, if you think this is interesting... Watch tips from a shipwright. Lou, Lou Sozed is hands down the most amazing resource on the internet for shipwright work. So if you this end up owning a- that we watch. Yeah, this is how I learned how to do this. Um, so if you think that what I'm showing is cool, you're gonna lose your mind when you see him. And I also plan on getting Jimmy, a local corker uh, from town on the show. He was keen to do some demonstrations and he makes Lou look like he doesn't know what he's doing. This oh, guy's... That's no, he does. Honestly, Jimmy has been corking for 50 years, nonstop, exclusively a corker, single career. I, I have, I'll I, post a video right here of him corking. It is unbelievable. Nobody is that fast and nobody is that precise. So, I'll show you my little demo set up here. Oh, yeah, I got all my tools. I got my... My corking kit and I got my cotton and oakum. Here I just put wedges in between to give them a slight bevel. Normally you wouldn't be able to see through but this gives me a, a, a decent example. Okay, You're drinking? Oh babe that's illegal. That's actually not anymore. <laughs> I wish it ended in, I don't know, whenever. Oh I, I was, I'm living under a rock. I don't know these things. <laughs> Wood boat guy who wears vintage with these prohibitions yeah. still going. <laughs> I've been out at sea for too long. I'm going to start with a little bit of rolling oakum. So, when you buy oakum, it comes... So here's some raw oakum. It comes in really chunky, really unusable strands. Um, here's a bit of oakum that I've rolled previously. So I got it to a nice consistent level of... Uh, thickness throughout and then I can cork with that so I'll use this in the demo and here's some cotton and it's always kind of ready to go. Uh, Lou goes on in his video about how you can have a bucket or a bag beside you so that he, yeah he uses the bucket technique that's very cool. I, I do a bag off my hip but I use I do this so that you don't if this is 15 feet long you'll rip this in two no problem it's, it's really really susceptible so keeping it close to you so you don't have to worry about it too much is good i'll use this in the demo this is a bale of raw oakum you can see it's pretty unusable unless you are corking no it's unusable so i'll pull some of this off and so what i like to do is separate it out And it tends to just kind of pull into its own threads of oakum. There you go. That's a pretty, pretty close to usable amount right here. This is a good thickness here. This is pretty good. This is a bit much. So what you can do is if you're careful, you can pull it a bit, open it up a bit. It gets pretty thin here. Wow. And then you can stretch that a bit and 
I've been sitting down and rolling, but I've been finding it can be pretty tricky to, to roll sometimes. And when I was doing it in the snow in a bit of a panic, I was finding standing up and rolling upwards was really good. Because you'll notice it slides on my pants, but when I'm upright, it tends to behave a little bit more predictably. But your pants are gonna smell like oakum. It's very oily, very it rich smell. It smells good though. It smells like expensive men's perfume, but like but men that don't go outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just buy some oakum and rub it on yourself. So this Feel, is a bit thick here. Sauvage, whatever that shit is. It's a bit thick there, so I'll try and stretch it out if I can. Or pull some out. It actually smells really good because it's like pine tar. Um it's a some sort of a linseed oil oh. or something, I believe. Um, pine tar smells, honest to God, smells way better. So yeah, I've been finding the standing upright and rolling technique seems to work pretty dang good. And normally when I roll a thread of oakum, I'm rolling many feet of it. Like, this is just a two foot demo, right? But... Yeah, you twist up a whole ball of it. Yeah. So that's a bit thick, so I'll shed that off. And then when you're done, you roll it up. And then you can put that in your hip bag. Normally the balls are about this big, but you put that in your hip bag and you can cork with it. So we got some oakum here. We got some cotton here. This, this is more akin to corking a deck because it's upright, but when I was corking the side of my boat, everything is falling. Yeah, it's vertical. So um, I have a pretty random assortment of corking irons. As you can see, this one, has a bend in it. I was using this one to cork the garboard, as I was saying, because it lets you put it more horizontal somewhere where you can access it to hit it with a hammer a lot easier than corking from below. Um, and they all have varying depths. Uh, this is on the face. There's names for all of these, like this is a making iron, I believe. Um, yeah, this one's got a pretty blunt face to it. It'd probably be good exactly for what I'm doing. This one's really sharp. So I'll roll this little bit of cotton into a ball and then take, take this iron to lay it in. It's not very big, so it works well for this. So the trick is, once you start it, you put a little bit in, then you come back, you press down, easier when it's upright. Get a bit of a roll going on and push it in and then you come back you roll it and you push it in come back roll it push it in so you do this over and over and over until your seam has all your cotton in it it's not much more to go And you get a, a sense of the wider the seam, like you would, you could pack these a lot closer together, but I, I'm getting a good sense that, I mean, it's widening up here so I can start doing tighter packs. Yeah, it's a little, but little thin. No <laughs> we'll paint a happy little tree over here. And I like to leave a little tail out just so I know where I've where I've ended. And then the seam is pretty wide, so I'll use this iron because it fits in here nicely. It actually butts up nicely into this gap. And I'll use this corking mallet. It's got a really nice bright sound to it. it gives me a lot of good feedback. I have this one, which is oak, and it doesn't quite just doesn't quite have the same ring to it doesn't tell me as much, so uh, I like that sound. So I, I tend, I favor this mallet. It's also very light. It's very satisfying. And it just feels good in your hand. Yeah, this is, this is a pro feels right, you know? profound mallet. There's little like, sort of, I don't know, maybe pieces of bone or something that are in here that, that harden it up a lot more too. And I'm assuming it's oak. It is, um, 
It's a European style, I believe is what this is called when they're split like this. And this is supposed to help out with the ringing sound. And this one doesn't have a split in the top. So I had another one of these as well, but I sold it so that I could go sailing. Um, sacrifices were made. And so the trick is you start here. You, you don't just go into the middle and start pounding it in. Woo, how's it going? I'm just filming a little. You set a really high, you set a really high standard for cleanliness around here. So. Yeah, I got the bottom and top sides done, man. Uh, we're gonna bounce real quick with how, uh... What are you doing right now? Yeah, you want our beers now? Actually, give me, give me 10 uh, minutes, I gotta film this last little yeah, bit. Go to the store and come back. Go to the street. Yeah, yeah fuck cool. yeah, dude. Sweet. Okay, so when you're starting to, to, to drive your, um, cotton in, it's, you don't, you don't just start in the middle and start driving in, because you'll end up splitting this and kind of creating multiple wedges. Um, the key is you start at one end and it should and then you back out and then it's a bit weird because these splay out but you're getting the idea and it starts to drive it in a lot uh, like ahead of you So the key with this, when you're doing your your loops, the reason for that is that when a sailboat works, the the planks, the boat can stretch this way or that way. It tends to work a lot. Um, flexing is what they call working on a sailboat. So when, when the boat is working, it can pull the boat in different directions. So these like tight points in it, where it's like loose, and then it's the, the twisted up ball and then loose and then the twisted up ball. It creates really hard points that the planks will swell up against. And so instead of like, you could drive this in just straight and it would become watertight. But when the boat starts to work, these planks have opportunity to slide this way or that way in opposition to each other. And those sort of biting points in it will create resistance so that the planks can't shift one against the other as easily. So it actually is a critical step in keeping everything um, rigid and structural. It's driven in pretty okay. Here, let me put a clamp on this. I'm just gonna put a clamp in the middle section here. That way I can harden up on it a lot better because right now these planks have nothing holding them together. Okay, so this is more akin to a, a timber that would be hard up against the other one now. And so I'll take the, the making iron that I was using earlier, and we should be able to, oh, see, it's actually too big now. Switch up to, this one's got a good edge. And Yeah, can, I don't know, can you guys hear that difference of like, of how this mallet kind of chimes up when the cotton is hard up in here? You get a different ring and it all starts acting as one. It feels like these are interconnected, but you, you get a, a bit more of a ting to it once, once the cotton is driven home properly. So that's great. Oh, that's actually kind of cool how how it is in the back side. Good demonstration actually. So normally this bevel, quote unquote, that I've created by putting wedges in between these so that these planks are coming in at each other at an angle, would then be met up with the bottom of the plank being butted firmly up against each other. So if you will, 
this top portion would have a, a bevel in it and this portion of the plank would be butted firmly up against the one next to it so you can only drive the cotton so far but presuming that this here would be about the point where the planks would butt up against each other you can see how the cotton is driven in it's actually quite satisfying to see and really the same it's the same process for oakum it's just that oakum tends to be a little thicker and it's ten the saying is cotton for a boat oakum for a ship but I still tend to use oakum on Dagon. So it's a bit hardier, a bit beefier, so it's better for wider seams. And often, I mean, it's a good demonstration. We'll back this out. You'll often do one to two threads of cotton and then a thread or two, depending on the scenario, of oakum on top. So we'll do that, drive a thread of oakum on the top of this cotton and the stretch irons. Oh, it's a bit too thick. I'll just go to here. Um, that's a good iron for this. Actually, I'll use my making iron. There it is. lost a clamp so she's gonna blow apart a lot easier now wonderful demo hey? This is what the seam looks like with the oakum driven into it. And it's nice and hard up in there. The cotton hasn't blown out the backside. It's, at this point, I would put bottom paint on here and then put seam compound on, which you can use all kinds of things for seam compound, including the shit mix I used. So yeah, here's a basic demonstration of exactly how corking works. It's a bit sloppy because it's not actually, actually on a boat, but uh, yeah, it kind of gives you an idea of the technical aspect of it, which which is a real it's like a it's like a voodoo science. There, there's, it's kind of fast and loose, and you'll hear something different from every shipwright. Um, so, you know that you can overcork a seam. Like, don't fucking jam it full of stuff and just keep going and then fill it up with more. You can start uh, blowing the planks apart. In fact, I've heard of one boat. Jimmy told me about where. There was twist in the whole boat so they reefed all the seams out and then they started corking strategically in opposition to the um to the twist and they actually straightened the boat out and then another thing that can happen is if you have a really wide seam somewhere on your boat you can actually reef out above it or below it and cork towards it so like cork the lowest plank cork the next one cork the next one cork the next one and it'll actually tighten up those that one seam and then uh, fix the boat of that wide seam so corking as much as it is a system of making a boat watertight there's also sort of an art to it which is what i find so fascinating and 
Uh, so it's an art and a science. It's a method of keeping the boat watertight, giving it stability and structural integrity, and um, yeah, doing, I guess exactly what it does. It's those two things. So there you go. Uh, little, little cork and demo. Yeah. And I, and I taught some of that to Haley and she really enjoyed it and she took to it really well. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. You know what also was fun? I see the Jackie Valley paint off the ground. Oh, babe. And you kind of get all the class there. Yeah. Oh, there's more here. My site would look like a shit show if it wasn't for Haley. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> all right, time to clean up all my shit. Have a smoke. A beer. All right, on that note, thanks for watching, guys, um, guys and gals, husbands and wives, wives and husbands. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, we really appreciate you guys watching. Um, we were going to do this shit anyways, but it's cool that other people are into it. Yeah, I don't feel alone at the boatyard now. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, commenting, all that wonderful stuff. We got uh, a growing collection yeah. of pages. My, my back hurts less when you subscribe. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, also, we have a growing collection of patrons. We're at like 11 now, which is... You're the real heroes. Yeah, it doesn't sound like much, I was but, the first oh. patron. Yeah. Really. And, um... They didn't want us to look like losers that had no friends. And you know what? It worked out, so... And honestly, I, I wouldn't have eaten um, if it wasn't for you guys, so... Um, I mean, I would have fed you, but... That's irresponsible. Don't make Haley feed me. Um, no, we really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should be feeding yeah, myself. That's outsourcing. Yeah, outsourcing. Uh, yeah, but, but huge thank you. Um, we got a couple really cool people on Patreon, and, and I've been posting a couple extra videos here and there on Patreon for like just showing people what I'm up to in my daily life because it doesn't make it all into one video. Um, like the other day, I was freezing my ass off at like midnight trying to upload a video because I was standing somewhere with Wi Fi. You know, I'm going through it for you guys. So, uh, for the full story, join Patreon. Uh, otherwise, just keep commenting, liking, and uh, uh, yeah, we're doing a live tomorrow, so tune in for that. Yeah, see you guys tomorrow on the live. Thanks again for tuning in. <laughs>